All right, welcome to this episode. I am your host, Tony Blodgett, and today I have the great privilege of interviewing my friend, my coworker, one of my employees, <laughs> Dave Gardner. Welcome to the show, Dave. Thank you. Um, so look, we want to highlight today uh, a little bit of Dave's story. You know, it's, it's often that I have people come to me who want to get into the mortgage business. And about 10 years ago, me and Dave had that exact conversation. I remember meeting him in the conference room and, uh, he was just sharing how he was at a place where he was looking to decide what he wanted to do next with his career. And I'll let him talk about kind of his background um, in surveying and, and other stuff that he had done before the mortgage business. But he had come to the come to the de determination that a career in the mortgage space might be a good option for him. And so many people have have inquired about this over the last couple of years. Matter of fact, there's a lot of people, Dave, who've gotten into the mortgage industry in the last couple of years in an environment where loans were literally falling out of the sky. Um, every relative of yours, every friend of <laughs> yours was probably going, oh, you're in the mortgage business? Should I refinance? And it was really easy to get business. But the reality is, is when you got in the mortgage business in 2012, uh, it was not so easy to get business. And we're back to that season right now. And so I think people could learn a lot from, you know, someone who got into the business at the age that you did. It was not your first career. Um, you've been highly successful at it. And let's just unpack a little bit of your story and see if people can't learn a little bit about, well, A, I think some people will just learn about Dave because you're like the enigma. And, um, and also I think some people could use this to help their business. So um, let's rewind 10 years. And first of all, let's, let me just ask you this. What made you think that the mortgage business was the place to go. Well, and again, if we go back 10 years ago, I mean, what was happening in 2011, 2012 with the market, everything else, you know, the company I had that I had started in 94, you know, primarily working with uh, builders and developers doing land development, you know, we went from 30 employees to three, right? And that was a real shocker. And then from there, you know, uh, I, I, I went to work for a bank that I'd helped start to get us out of toxic assets, you know, and then I went back to my surveying company after I'd kind of done my job and done my role and helped get them back on the right footing. And then, uh, you know, it was just a fortuitous call, really, that got me to sit down with you. And, uh, you know, one of my very good friends owned a mortgage company at the time. And uh, he, he, uh, they were talking and all of a sudden I'm in an interview and uh, I'm sitting down with you and a very large group of people. And, and keeping in mind, I hadn't been in an interview for a lifetime, relatively speaking. It was like, wow, there's a lot of people here to talk to me. And if, if you remember that day, we're sitting there and there's a conference room full of people. And then like after an hour, a few dropped off. And after another hour, a couple more dropped off. And then at the end, it's just you and me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, we hit it off, man. What, yeah. what can I say? I, um, and I do remember those times and it was difficult. So I guess you would, you would say that really it was the shift in the real estate market. You were in a different place. You were doing land development. You were working with builders. You were doing surveys and whatnot. And that was rampant for so many years. And then as the market kind of dried up, all of the financial financing opportunities had gone away for land development, construction loans, all of that was gone. And there just wasn't as much demand. And so you're like, hey, now what? Well, and you know, part of being in that land development um, arena, you know, you're dealing so much with cities and counties and the ever changing ebb and flow of regulation and explaining to your client why they're having to do certain things that they didn't have to do yesterday. You know, and after 30 years of land use, it kind of just ate my soul, Yeah, <laughs> you know, just dealing with, with everything on a day-to-day -day basis and explaining to mom and pops even just why it was so expensive for them just to be able to give a piece of their five acres to one of their kids. And so that really just started kind of that mental, emotional shift. Like, I needed to find something to put a smile on my face. And, and again, just, you know, fortuitous timing, everything else, and sitting down with you and then taking on a role at that company that, you know, was really, I mean, you know, most people look at it and go, how did you get here? <laughs> yeah. Well, so it was funny because, you know, one of the, one of the difficult things about jumping right into loan origination as a business is that it's very difficult to kind of make ends meet. And, um, you know, Dave was friends with the owner of the company that I was 
the president of. So I ran the company and, and he was friends with the owner. That's, that's kind of how that, how that introduction was made. But I was like, you know, I've brought enough people into the mortgage business to know that, you know, I don't care how smart you are. You're going to starve in the, in the early, in the early stages, if you don't have something, you know, kind of feeding you some business. So we actually made arrangements um, to hire you on originally in a business development role, knowing that you had relationships and you were a go-getter and, and, and you could help us there. And I don't, we don't need to spend too much time talking about that role, but I remember after about a year and the mortgage 2013, it was getting tough. It was right. getting tough. And, um, you know, we were laying some people off and it was, it was a challenging time. And I remember going to you and being like, Hey, that salary that we talked about, uh, we're going to have to do something about that. Like, we don't want you to go anywhere, but Hey, maybe we should really help you make the transition into being a loan officer so that you can, um, you know, pay for yourself. Exactly. <laughs> well, and it was kind of just that, you know, that first year of, of helping the company do what the company needed to do. And uh, really, that that foundation of of managing the, the the lenders that we had at that time, those loan originators that we had at that time, and getting to see who who did business certain ways, and who was doing business other ways, and who was really good at marketing, or who was really good at relationship building, and kind of just looking from the outside in at that management aspect, and really getting a foot for, all right, well, I don't if. I don't want to do it that way. Mm. That's just not how I'm, I'm wired. But uh, then that, you know, a year later, here we are. Hey, you're on your own. You're going to go, uh, you know, sink or swim kind of thing. And, and uh, you know, the best decision I've ever made. Yeah. Well, that's a really good point, right? So you, I, I never thought about it that way, but you had this opportunity in a leadership role, really, in the organization to see what was working for each person. And, um, you know, here's the thing, guys. You don't have to be in a leadership role like Dave was at that time to find those clues, turns out <laughs> there's a whole bunch of YouTube channels and the mortgage coach community and all these other places where you can go learn what works. And I'll tell you, uh, I talk about mortgage coach because I am a huge fan, but B, there's so much content on that YouTube channel. If you're new, if you're a new loan officer, which is kind of who this episode is kind of geared towards, tune into that community. There's just thousands of interviews in there. But here's what you'll learn is that Everyone doesn't do it the same way. Everyone does it differently. And Dave, you didn't do it the same way. You did it very successfully. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you, I've brought a lot of people into the mortgage business, and most of them don't succeed. Um, it, it's a numbers game for sure. But um, but let's talk about that. So, you, you know, we had the talk. You're on your own. Um, and you have to now go out and get business. So where, where'd you go? Who'd you call? What was kind of your initial strategy to leverage your network that you had? Well, so, and again, I think first and foremost, being able to spend quality time with mentors really paid off because I could, I could get some wisdom, you know, wisdom is the bruises and the scars and the trophies. Right. And so understanding from you and some other good friends of ours to be able to sit down and just, you know, basically learn just through a conversation of some of the things that worked and didn't work and things to really think about. Um, my biggest hurdle really was going from a business where I knew probably every, every managing real estate broker in the county, right? And throughout the state, because I was working with them in a role where they had to come to me. And what was really a hard thing to overcome was to get them to see me in a different light. Um, so that was really interesting because, you know, I'd been very successful in this other role and getting that kind of turn down right? Because now I changed to being a, a lender. And uh, so that was a, a real obstacle to overcome. Um, what happened after I realized that was I just started going after people who didn't know me and started making phone calls and, you know, going out to lunches and just kind of getting to know people and figuring out who was doing business and who wasn't. And that kind of fed off itself. And, and reality was once I was able to start making those calls and those, the, having those conversations, I got into my own groove where I was more comfortable and having more and more conversations. Um, and I'm a relationship builder, like that's, that's me. I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not gonna broadcast out big, you know, advertising campaigns and everything else to try to shotgun in a bunch of lead generation. I really just wanna have a, I wanna have a client and a friend for life and whether it's the realtor or the actual client, that's how I just really wanna be. And uh, it worked really well in my past life. And you know, it just kind of, I, I, I take it like a, like a tree. Trees grow in rings. And so the more people you can make happy, the your ring grows. And the more of those people you make happy, your ring grows. And all of a sudden, you've got a full-on grown tree 
where you're just keep growing. I love that. Well, one thing you said that I think might resonate with, with people is you started by going after the people that you knew, but they also knew that you <laughs> didn't know the mortgage business. True That's a statement. really profound thing. You know, we, we tell people often like, hey, you're new, go call your sphere. And your sphere, now if you have good relationships with them, you can say, hey, look, I have good mentors. I work at a great company. I have the support behind me. You know, give me a chance. And, and I think you can definitely get some business that way. But the fact that you have the relationship with somebody doesn't mean that they're going to see you now as their mortgage professional. And so don't be let down by that. Matter of fact, be prepared for that and think about how you might, you know, get them to overcome that particular objection. I love that, Dave. That was, that's profound. And then I think the other thing you said is just a universal truth, which is the more you do something, the more comfortable you get. So the more people you went out and talked to, the more you got comfortable talking to more people. And look, I can assure you that that comes with repetitions and it starts with the first one. <laughs> like you have to get out there like this podcast, like you got to start the podcast at some point and to, and, you know, to get comfortable uh, having a conversation on camera. It's no different than going out and making a sales call to a real estate agent or a, uh, someone that you know is a real estate investor or whomever going direct to that consumer um, and, and doing that. So that's that's awesome. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, you know challenges that you've that you've had. I mean, in this journey, you've, you're now ten years <laughs> of of doing this, and I would argue you've been pretty darn consistent. I mean, we've gone through some seasons. You, I would argue, I always think of you as the new guy because you know <laughs> I mentored you, um, and I'd already been in the business for fifteen years before you got in. Well, you were ten. I was ten <laughs> when I started. Um, but now at this point, I mean, you've kind of been through some cycles. You've seen some things. You know what? Like right now, we're I just recorded an episode, you know, and we were talking about the challenges of rates jumping up by a hundred basis points. I mean, what are those seasons that you've seen that um, that have brought some challenges, and how have you overcome them? I don't want to put you on the spot, but is there anything you can think of? Well, you know, not specifically, but you know, the industry as a whole cycles, right? And I'm old enough to 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 know back like when my parents were looking at doing a cash out refinance in the 20s, right? Like 22 percent oh, right. cash out refinance. And, you know, me particularly, my first loan was a VA loan at 8%. That was free money then. You know, so when we look at these rates, yes, you know, they are still low. Um, and that's, you know, the perception that rates are high, right? Because, you know, if you were looking at the twos in advertisements consistently over and over again, you're like, oh, four, they've doubled, right? You know, and perception is perception, and that's a reality. Um, but but it's affordability. It's where we are. You know, rates are rates. They cycle. They go up. They go down. We, we have this conversation where you may get four today, but we may see a cycle. We're back into the twos and threes in a not near future. I mean, in the, in the near future. Yeah. So it sounds like to me what you're saying is you haven't had any challenges because uh, you kind of roll with the punches. I mean, it's going <laughs> to cycle. It's going to change. And you're just going to keep keep doing it. I think that the big thing when when you do what we do and realtors as well, because, you know, we kind of come from the same pool of people. Some go to the real estate side, some go to the lending side is understanding that there's storms. You know, there's there's weather patterns, if you will, where you've got to be able to, to navigate that storm. You got to have enough resources to get through a bad month. Um, you know, the, it's cyclical and, you know, you're not always going to be riding the top of the wave. Sometimes you're going to be down in the trough and you have to be prepared. But I think that's the key that you see successfully. And, and I witnessed that with that, that first year. And I see it with realtors and I see it with lenders is, did you get up this morning and go to work? Right. Did you go to work today? Did you get up with the idea that you're going to be successful? You're going to do what it takes to go to work. And, and so many people just, they put their head down, they put their head in the sand, they can't make a decision, they can't put a foot in front of the other. And I do believe that that's what sets us apart is being successful is you can have a bad day, you can have a bad week, let's face it, you can have a bad year. But if you got up every day consistently to do the right things, it turns. Yeah, well... That's one of the that's one of the blessings and curses of this industry is that you don't have a boss going, hey, <laughs> you didn't clock in today. You know, you're it's up to you to show up and 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 show up and, and work every day. <laughs> turns out, well, you're obviously you know a hard worker who's done that. Um, I want to I want to pivot a little bit and I want to talk about you know niches 
that you've developed because, um, you know, I know that you have your monopoly in real life. <laughs> uh, you do your own YouTube episodes and, or you, you have in the past. And I know enough about you to know that you've drawn from your experience in owning real estate, investing in real estate, working with distressed assets in the banking industry. How have you, like, what, what niches have you established and where have you decided to kind of insert yourself into this industry that you think has helped give you some success? Because I have to imagine you've you've leveraged some of that to develop the relationships that you have. And, um, and how much do you speak about your experience when you get a client? And does that endear them to you at a different level where they, you know, even though even when you were new, you're you're still an expert in real estate, because you owned a number of, you know, investment properties, right? So right. maybe speak a little bit to that. Well, so keep in mind that since I got out of the military, you know, a long time ago, you know, I would bore people whenever given an opportunity of why they need to be homeowners, because I truly believe that's the best way to build wealth for average America, right? There's a lot of ways you can do crypto, you can do all these other things. But the first and foremost thing is you got to have a roof over your head. So why not own the roof? Um, and so that's, you know, literally way before I got in the mortgage industry, I talked so many people into why they need to buy a home. And a lot of people don't realize that they can. And so that, that conversation became a, a, you know, sitting at a dinner table, sitting at a party, whatever, of why you don't own a home. Um, I do have that, that, ex that, that depth of experience of being an investor. My wife and I have both invested since the day we got together. Um, you know, sometimes it was by hook or crook, you know, just making things happen. But you have to do certain things, and sometimes you have to risk a lot to get there. But those risks pay off, you know, or sometimes you, you hit a snag, and sometimes it hurts. Um, but the ability to talk to different levels of real estate, not as a real tour, but as someone who's invested, bought, flipped, you know, doing flips before they were on Saturday morning TV, <laughs> right, back when, when they didn't take half an hour, right? <laughs> Um, and, and having that ability to talk. So yesterday I was just at lunch with a young couple. They currently own a home and they're just looking at what the next steps mean. You know, they're not very happy with the house they're in. And we literally sat for two hours and we just talked about the options available to them. And, and it was my juice, if you will, because we don't know what we don't know. And for me to be able to sit there and talk about whether it's a new loan, whether it's a cash out, whether it's, you know, we're going to fix this up and we're going to do this or do that it gave me opportunity to really dive into that knowledge base. Um, you know, when I talk to builders, you know, I can talk one-on-one -on -one with them. I understand what's going on in the marketplace. I know what's going on with doors and windows. Um, you know, I still have my finger on that pulse, you know, being able to talk to developers. As much as I hate land development, I still have a finger on that pulse, you know, and understanding what's going on at the federal and state and, and county city level. So it, uh, it, allows, it allows me to have fun. First and foremost, because I can talk to I can talk to you about whether it's an, you know the next investment makes sense or doesn't make sense. I can talk to a first time buyer about where they need to be, whether it's today, tomorrow, or you know six months or a year from now. But that that's what I enjoy the most is being able to have that variety of conversations because being able to talk on so many different levels it really juices me up. Yeah, no, I love that. Well, it sounds like what you've done is you've you've really just taken uh, everything you loved about your life <laughs> before you got in mortgage and then <laughs> use that to talk to people about mortgages. And it, it seems like it's turned out okay for you. Um, I don't want this to, to go on uh, too long. So I do want to bring us to a, a close here in a minute, but I want to ask you if you were talking to um, a newer loan officer or someone who got in the business, maybe in the last couple of years and they're struggling in their business. I mean, what advice would you have for them um, to, 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 to stabilize their business? Like, what, what advice do you have for newer or struggling loan officers right now? Well, the first one is somewhat cliche, but I used it pretty much anybody we've brought on here or someone who's new in our hallway is you need to act and you need to feel like you have a loan in your pocket, mm. right? That confidence level that comes with already having a loan in the pipeline maybe a couple loans in the pipeline. Not Just being desperate. Don't be desperate. Yeah. Right. Understand that, that you're the smartest person in that room, understanding mortgages when you're talking to a buyer or refinance or even a realtor is understanding that you bring the confidence, right? They're going to judge you on how you are being, how you portray yourself. So first and foremost, have a loan in your pocket. Understand that this deal can go or not go 
but then be passionate about what you do. Understand that, you know, you get one opportunity to have this conversation. Be good at it. Prepare yourself that you know what your topic is. Don't go halfway. Um, but the biggest thing is have the conversation, right? Make yourself get out of your comfort zone. Go have conversations that you may or may not be comfortable with knowing that you got a loan in your pocket. Yeah. And then seek out a mentor. If you're struggling and you're, you're there are people up and down any hallway in any mortgage company, maybe not as good as ours, but who have mentors. You know, I know that your mentor, we go back and talk to you about your story, you know, somewhat hard ass, you know, and said, you know, this is the way we do it. Yeah. Um, and I was blessed to have you as my mentor. And so I got to learn a lot of, of those things that made me, you know, pretty okay at what I do. I'm less hard ass. <laughs> that's for certain. Well, that's, that's good stuff, Dave. I, I would say, you know, that that's a good reminder. You know, we can't go out desperate for a loan. And even if you don't have one, you have to have an attitude of abundance and you can never need the deal that's sitting across from you. You cannot need that deal. It will come through in how you talk to someone. And, um, and here's the other thing, you know, and you said it, which is have the conversations because that's how you get better. And you will get feedback from a client who says, you know, I really didn't get the sense that you knew what you were talking about. Well, that's your, that's your clue to go get educated on guidelines or go, go learn more. I, I've been there, you guys. I sat across from one of my first clients with all the disclosures that we had to have them sign, and I bumbled my way through trying to explain to them what they said, and they literally put on the survey, like, you had no idea what the paperwork said that you were asking us to sign. It was one of the most embarrassing times of my life. And I will assure you this, the next week I spent reading and learning every word on every disclosure. And had I not gotten that feedback and been super embarrassed, um, I think I even lost that client. Um, I wouldn't be as diligent as I, as I am or as I was when I was originating loan. So it's, it's those at-bats where you strike out, right. that you learn, but you have to have the at-bats and you have to keep going. Um, well, cool, Dave. I love your story, man. I, um, I love you as a, you know, my brother. And I'm so glad that this, this, this fortuitous situation happened and, and we came into each other's lives. And, and I'm just happy and proud of, of how well this industry has treated you. And you're a gift to this industry. And I know, look, I still call you. I got a land deal. I got an investment opportunity. One of the first people I call is Dave Gardner. Um, and uh, because he's, he's a wealth of knowledge. And I know that every one of your clients and realtors value the relationship that they have with you because you bring uh, so much to the table. And I'm, uh, I'm glad to have you part of our family. Likewise, brother. Right on. Well, hey, thank you guys for taking the time to watch. If you're a new loan officer, I hope that you took something away from this. And if you're a seasoned veteran, uh, I hope that you related to Dave. And I hope you also maybe took something away from this that you hadn't considered. And uh, hey, this, um, you know, this is the season that we're in. And uh, this, the seasons will continue to evolve. Uh, I appreciate your time, your attention. I'll see you on a future episode. Take care.